Welcome to the second half of chapter 13. We start off on page 225 at the bottom of the page, right underneath the break. Esperanza kept her mind off Miguel by working hard and concentrating on Isabel. When Esperanza saw a lug of early peaches come into the shed, she set aside a bag to bring home to her. She just had to have them, especially today. As she walked down the row of cabins after work, she could see Isabel in the distance, waiting for her. Isabel sat up straight, primly, with her small hands folded in her lap, her eyes searching the row. When she saw Esperanza, she jumped up and ran toward her. As she got closer, Esperanza could see the tear streaks on her cheeks. Isabel threw her arms around Esperanza's waist. I did not win Queen of the May, she said, sobbing into the folds of her skirt. I had the best grades, but the teacher said she chose on more than just grades. Esperanza wanted desperately to make it up to her. She picked her up and held her. I'm sorry, Isabel. I'm so sorry that they did not choose you. She put her down and took her hand and they walked back to the cabin. Have you told the others, your mothers? <laughs> no, she sniffed. They are not home yet. I was supposed to go to Irene and Melina's, but I wanted to wait for you. Esperanza took her into the cabin and sat on the bed next to her. Isabel, it does not matter who won. Yes, you would have made a beautiful queen, but that would have lasted for only one day. A day goes by fast, Isabel, and then it is over. Esperanza bent down, pulled her valise from under the bed, and opened it. The only thing left inside was the porcelain doll. She had shown it to Isabel many times, telling her the story of how Papa had given it to her. Although a little dusty, the doll still looked lovely, its eyes hopeful, like Isabel's usually were. I want you to have something that will last more than one day, said Esperanza. She lifted the doll from the valise and handed it to Isabel. To keep as your own. Isabel's eyes widened. Oh, no, no, Esperanza, she said, her voice still shaky and her face wet with tears. Your papa gave her to you. Esperanza stroked Isabel's hair. Do you think my papa would want her buried inside a valise all this time with no one playing with her? Look at her. She must be lonely. She's even getting dusty. And look at me. I am much too old for dolls. People would make fun of me if I carried her around. And you know how I hate it when people laugh at me. Isabel, you would be doing me and my papa a favor if you would love her. Really? said Isabel. Yes, said Esperanza. And I think that you should take her to school to show all your friends. Don't you agree? I'm sure none of them, not even the Queen of the May, has ever owned anything as beautiful. Isabel cradled the doll in her arms, her tears drying on her face. Esperanza, I prayed and prayed about being Queen of the May. Our Lady knew that being Queen would not last, but that the doll would be yours for a long time. Isabel nodded, a small smile beginning. What will your mama say? Esperanza hugged her. I have a meeting with the doctor this week, so if he lets me, I will ask her. But I think that Mama would be very proud that she belongs to you. Then, grinning, she held out the bag of peaches. I hate asparagus, too. <clears throat> Esperanza and Hortensia waited in the doctor's office. Hortensia sat and tapped her foot, and Esperanza paced, looking at the diplomas on the wall. 
Finally, the door swung open and the doctor walked in, then scooted behind his desk and sat down. Esperanza, I have good news, he said. Your mother's health has improved and she will be well enough to leave the hospital in a week. She is still a little depressed, but I think she needs to be around all of you. Please remember, though, that once she goes home, she will have to rest to build up her strength. There is still a chance of a relapse. Esperanza started laughing and crying at the same time. Mama was coming home. For the first time in five months since Mama had entered the hospital, Esperanza's heart felt lighter. The doctor smiled. She has been asking for her crochet needles and yarn. You can see her now for a few minutes if you like. Esperanza ran down the hospital halls with Hortensia behind her to Mama's bedside, where they found her sitting up in bed. Esperanza flung her arms around her neck. Mama! Mama hugged her, then held her at arm's length and studied her. Oh, Esperanza, how you've grown. You look so mature. Mama still looked thin, but not so weak. Esperanza felt her forehead, and there was no fever. Mama laughed at her. It wasn't a strong laugh, but Esperanza loved the sound. Hortensia pronounced that her color was good and promised to purchase more yarn so that it would be waiting when she came home. You would not believe your daughter, Ramona. She always gets called to work in the sheds. She cooks now and takes care of the babies as well as their own mother. Mama reached up, pulled Esperanza to her chest and hugged her. I am so proud of you. Esperanza hugged Mama back. When the visiting hour was over, she hated to leave, but kissed Mama and said her goodbyes, promising to tell her everything as soon as she came home. All week they prepared for Mama's homecoming. Hortensia and Josefina scrubbed the little cabin until it was almost antiseptic. Esperanza washed all the blankets and propped the pillows in the bed. Juan and Alfonso cushioned a chair and several crates under the shade trees so that Mama could recline outside during the hot afternoons. On Saturday, as soon as Esperanza helped Mama from the truck, she wanted a quick tour of Papa's roses, and she got weepy when she saw the blooms. Visitors came all afternoon, but Hortensia would only let people stay a few minutes. Then she shooed them away for fear Mama wouldn't get her rest. That night, Isabel showed Mama the doll and how she was taking care of it, and Mama told her that she thought Isabel and the doll belonged together. When it was time for bed, Esperanza carefully lay down next to Mama, hoping she wouldn't disturb her. But Mama moved closer and put her arms around Esperanza and held her tightly. Mama, Miguel is gone, she whispered. I know, Mija, Hortensia told me. But Mama, it was my fault. I got angry and told him he was still a peasant, and then he left. It could not have been all your fault. I'm sure he knows you didn't mean it. He'll come back soon. He couldn't be away from his family for long. They were quiet. Mama, we've been away from Abuelita for almost a year, said Esperanza. I know, said Mama quietly. It does not seem possible. But I've saved money. We can bring her soon. Do you want to see how much? Before Mama could answer, Esperanza turned on the light, checking to make sure she hadn't woken Isabel. She tiptoed to the closet and took out her valise. She grinned at Mama, knowing how proud she would be of all the money orders. She opened the bag and her mouth dropped open. She couldn't believe what she saw. She tipped the valise upside down and shook it hard. It was empty. The money orders were gone. This concludes chapter 13. Thank you for listening.